Today, market participants get to know stunning data on the U.S. labor market. One more sensational piece of news is that one Fed policymaker told something completely new. Trading Friday began as usual with an Asian session. On an early Friday, the Bank of Japan again made a familiar statement that it's a highly important to prevent undesirable swings in the yen's forex rate. Fluctuations in the yen's forex rate are one of the important factors affecting the economy and consumer prices. Bank of Japan's Katsueda said today during his speech in the parliament. Following these statements, the dollar fell to a two-week low of 150.95 against the yen. Given that the authorities are not ruling out any options for saving the yen, markets have to remain vigilant. Traders are waiting for at least some hints from a governor Kitsuweda about a further rate increase. In theory, a rate hike should follow a sharp rise in wages this year and acceleration in consumer inflation. Meanwhile, the interest rate difference between the United States and Japan remains wide, triggering sell-offs of the Japanese yen. Moreover, Federal Reserve speakers came up with a statements in support of the dollar over the past 24 hours, and their remarks were not dovish at all. For example, Richmond Federal Reserve Bank President Thomas Palkin made it clear that um, he would not want to rush to his policy. It would be wise not to rush to cut interest rates because no one wants inflation to return, he explained his position. His colleague from Minneapolis, Neil Kashkari, generally admitted that a rate cut this year may not be necessary if inflation continues to slow down. The markets heard such a hyper-hawkish forecast for the first time this year. Therefore, it's not surprising that all three Wall Street indexes closed in the red yesterday and fell by 1% each. Today, amid geopolitical tensions in the Middle East and the surprise U.S. jobs report, investors prefer to flock to the safe haven assets. Therefore, the S&P 500 index is trading lower today, within the interday carrier between 5,146 and 5,257 points. On the contrary, the U.S. dollar recovered from a two-week low and strengthened even more today. Its index relatively to six rival currencies sharply went up and rose to the range of 104.50 and 104.70. It seems that the greenback is on the way to a long term and a large-scale reinforcement. At least the data received today on the U.S. labor market has already increased the demand for the American currency. The non farm payrolls published a few hours ago showed that the U.S. labor market added an impressive 303,000 new jobs in February, that uh, it uh, looked its strongest employment in the nine months. Moreover, the previous reading was also upgraded to 275,000. The consensus was a third lower at 200,000. At the same time, annual wage growth, as expected, slowed to 4.1 percent, but unemployment has also declined. That's uh, the demand for workforce remains, so wages will rise, pushing inflation rates up. That's uh, the Federal Reserve has a leeway to postpone the first rate cut until the second half of 2024. In contrast to the opposing views among Fed policymakers, there is more uh, anonymity in the ranks of ECB officials. Most of the ECB speakers express the common idea. They advocate for the start of a monetary easing in June, although the final decision will most likely depend on what the June data on wages in the European Union shows. In the meantime, all support factors are on the side of the US dollar. If yesterday the single European currency by inertia still maintained at a least some growth, today this movement was interrupted around the 1.0875 level. The reasons and consequences of this reversal are entirely related to the comments of the Fed policymakers. Besides, the greenback received a boost from the much stronger than expected non-farm payrolls.
In turn, these factors completed the picture of the fall in the euro. As a result, the single currency rapidly broke through the critical support of 1.0800 and entered into consolidation at the lower border of the corridor between 1.0790 and 1.0847. The bullish scenario looks unrealistic today. For this, the price has to return to the level of 1.0800 and rebound. Overall, a climb above 1.0850 may indicate that the bulls are again showing interest in the single European currency. The Fed Reserve is not the only catalyst of a market moves. The threat of a supply disruptions due to the lingering conflict in the Middle East continues to keep Brent oil above $90 per barrel. Oil prices have not traded at such elevated levels since October last year. At the same time, oil has been growing for the second week, and locally, prices have already climbed above $91 per barrel. Another reason for the rally was rumors about oil output cuts by the largest suppliers. However, this news has not yet received any confirmation. If oil output cuts um, are confirmed officially, then most likely oil prices will again fall below $90 per barrel. Firstly, the scale of the oil rally is already quite impressive. Secondly, after overcoming this ecological level, some pullbacks are inevitable. Given the fact that oil is still overbought, a local price correction is simply necessary. The only thing that can now contribute to a further rise in the prices is the next high impact news. You have watched the market review by InstaForex analyst for Friday, April 5. Subscribe to InstaForex TV channel and we keep you updated on all market developments. Feel free to ask any questions and leave your comments. So, see you online next week.